Hi, my name is Madeleine Petrin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be looking at video 4 of my self-publishing A to Z series, which will be on point of view, also known as POV. So when you start writing your story, something that you definitely need to figure out is which point of view you want to write from. So the first one is first person, um, which is uh, told through I, which is usually you're in the main character's head, but it could also be from a narrator. Uh, such like in The Great Gatsby, it's Nick Carraway who tells the story. Some pros and cons about first person is that you are in the person's head. So you know their thoughts, you know their feelings, you know what they know only. So you see the world through their eyes. Um, so if you have a great main character, that could be really awesome. If people don't like your main character, you might have trouble with that one. Um, it also brings about the unreliable narrator. Um, so since it's only what you see and what you experience as a main character, if the main character has some false beliefs and thinks somebody is a really bad person, they might assume the worst of them and say that they did things that it might not be proven. Since they're the ones who are telling the story, their biases will come into it, their assumptions. You'll get the story as they see it, which might not be how it actually happened. Um, so that's something interesting to look at. This is the POV that was used in the Owens Chronicles as well as in Shards of Glass. It's also used in Hunger Games and a lot of YA novels these days. You can also use second person. This isn't used so much in fiction, it's more something that they use in non-fiction. Uh, like, these are the five steps you need to take to get your life back on track. Or if you want to cook a chicken parmesan, you have to take this amount of chicken and that amount of cheese. You know, it's uh, it's very common in nonfiction. In fiction, it's um, it's something that you can play around with. It's definitely cool and interesting to try it out. A lot of people will use it for short stories, just to try their hand at it. Um, but it was also really popular in those choose your own adventures. Like, you open the door and find a dragon. Do you A, take out your sword, B, run away, you know, it's... Uh, you are the main character of the story. Next uh, is third person, which has its own varieties as well. So you can have third person limited, which is basically like first person. You're telling the story from the main character's point of view. You're just not inside of their head so much as, uh, like you don't use I, you use she, he, it. Um, so you're still in that person's head. You still should have the same biases and the same stuff like that. You're just one step removed slightly from it. So it's not I walked through the door, it's he walked through the door. So you're following the story right with them, but you're not them, kind of, if that makes any sense. So you only know what that person knows. Um, like in Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter is told from a third person uh, limited from Harry's point of view. So when you're watching the scene, reading the scene, I mean, uh, you know what's going on in Harry's mind and you know what Harry thinks is going on but you don't know what's happening in Hermione's head or in Ron's head. You don't know why they do things. You just get his perception of what's going on. Then you have third person omniscient is I believe how you would say that. Uh, so this is like a god narrator. This person knows what's happening everywhere to everybody at all times. So uh, you can end up with things like he walked into the forest not knowing that she was waiting there for him with an axe. You know like you know what's happening to the main character, but you also know what's happening in everybody else's head everywhere else in the world. So you're basically an all-knowing narrator, which can get really complicated because you don't want to overwhelm the person, like bombard them with too much information, but you have the choice to share as much as you want or as little as you want. You find this kind of thing in uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy are told in third person omniscient, as well as Pride and Prejudice, where you get Elizabeth and Darcy's uh, inner brain workings throughout the story. Then you have multi-POV. Um, so usually this will also be in third person, but like in Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin will have different chapters for different characters, and in that person's chapter, um, you're in their head, you see what they see, you hear their thoughts, and it's all from their point of view. Um, but in the next chapter, even if they're still in that next chapter, if it's not their chapter when they're the main point of view, you won't know what's in their head. So you can have a chapter that's like it's Jamie's chapter and you have everything that's going on for Jamie. And then Jamie could be later on in Tyrion's chapter, but you won't know what's going on in Jamie's mind because you're in Tyrion's mind now. So that one's also really interesting. They use it a lot in romances where they like to have um, you in the head of Hero 1 as well as Hero 2. You really want to be careful not to head jump too much. It's really confusing if you bounce from one head to the other. Um, like George R. R. Martin does it really well when he sticks in that head for the whole chapter. Uh, you can do it like by scene where you'll switch around and go into different characters' heads for different scenes. Um, but you want to make sure you don't do it too often that the reader doesn't know whose head they're in or can't follow the story. Or it's just you don't want to make it confusing. So you want to stick 
to usually whoever has the most to gain or the most to lose in a scene is whose head you would be in for it. So now that you know the different POVs, it's really important to figure out which one you're going to use. I would recommend that to figure this out, you start by writing in all of them, so to try it out. Uh, try writing in first person, try writing in second person, try writing in third uh, omniscient, uh, limited, try writing from a different character's point of view and see what you feel more comfortable with because no matter what the genre conventions or what works best, it, if you're not comfortable with that writing style it might be easier to just write with what you feel more comfortable with or just to figure that out is always a good idea. Next so you'd want to look at what works best for your story. So if you have a big epic fantasy like George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones series, uh, you might want to use the multi POV because you can't tell the story from one person's point of view because they can't be everywhere and there's so many things happening all over a huge expanse of land and time. So in that case you might want to use multi POV. Like in the romance, if you really want to be in both of their heads, you're going to have to do the same thing. Whereas if there's two characters and one of them is a killer and you don't want them to know that until the very ending, then you'd be much better with a third person limited or a first person. Uh, POV because you don't want us to know the ending before you want to reveal it. So it's a look at what works best for the story. And then number three, you would want to see which one is uh, expected of the readers. So different genres have different conventions. Uh, YA is known to write in first person. Um, some romances are starting to have first person as well. Uh, but some genres would be completely thrown if you decided to just write in first person. They would not be expecting it and they would I'm not saying you couldn't sell it, but it wouldn't be what was expected of the genre. So I definitely look into, based on your genre, based on your category and stuff like that, what is expected of your book. Um, then you would look at all three of these, what's expected of you, um, what you're more comfortable with, and what works best with the story, and figure out which one you should be writing in. Uh, you can change it after you started, it's just really hard, so it's best to get this at the beginning before you start writing. So this was video number four in the self-publishing A to Z series. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like it below and you can subscribe to the channel so you can get um, all the other videos in the series which will release every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week.